Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Stock and I'm here to talk to you about the fundamental analysis and technical analysis uh, coming up in the week ahead for the Tesla stock price. Uh, if you would please go ahead and click that subscribe button. Uh, you know, click that notification so you don't miss out on any of the future posts. I have some more EV stuff coming up for you for this week ahead, uh, trying to find you some entry points, exit points, should you uh, keep a hold of the stock, sell the stock. Um, also, don't forget to like this, share it out with your friends, and uh, stick around and see what we got. All right, so uh, first let's talk about some fundamentals of Tesla. So it's nothing really all that surprising or new about Tesla since uh, we had their last earnings report. Uh, we know that they're a profitable and growing company. Uh, we knew that they, they just consistently beat revenue expectations. Uh, uh, last time it was reported in quarter three, it was 76 cents per share. The uh, next uh, revenue estimate is coming in at 88 cents per share. Uh, which is about a 15% uh, increase over Q3. Um, additionally, the average revenue estimates coming in uh, for Q4 of this year um, are a 13% increase over Q3, and that's just huge for it. And also, if we look at the uh, estimate for uh, the earnings from uh, 2020 to the earnings to, to 2021, we go from about $30 billion estimated uh, for uh, the entirety of 2020 to uh, 45 billion in earnings for uh, for Q4 respectively. So um, other big news, I mean, of course, there was the inclusion into the S&P 500 on December the 21st. Um, that puts them in the, the sixth largest company in the S&P uh, behind Google, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, uh, Microsoft. Uh, I don't think I left any of them out there. Um, they're still rapidly expanding as a company. Uh, they have factories going up. They have one uh, that's going to be open in Germany, uh, in Berlin, um, and that is supposed to be the most advanced that they've built yet. Um, they also have another one opening up in Austin, Texas. That'll be in 2022. Um, the Berlin, the Germany one is uh, March 2021 is the expected date. They'll be uh, producing the Model Y and the Model 3. So uh, check that for me. Uh, if you would please, but I am pretty certain that those are the models that are going to be built there. Um, besides the factories that they're building, uh, the one in Germany, the one in Austin, Texas, um, I mean, they're, they're just all over the place. They have robotics with their autonomous driving. Uh, AI is also included in there, their energy storage, transportation uh, as a service with uh, robo taxis. Um, you know, this uh, company is just, it's enormous, it's expanding. Um, you know, on the fundamentals, at least as far as a growth company, you know, it's, it's looking amazing. Um, the, uh, the battery range, uh, battery is huge. That uh, $100 per kilowatt hour benchmark uh, is something that, uh, I, I mean, Tesla just keeps continuing to innovate. You know, they, uh, they put out the tablet's battery, which is going to lower the cost of production um, and it keep moving towards, uh, towards that, uh, that kilowatt, uh, dollars per kilowatt hour uh, price target that they're looking for. Um, the, uh, the range that they're getting in the batteries, they say the 54% increase uh, in range on the batteries, uh, putting the mileage for the consumer vehicles, uh, you know, within the same ranges um, as a fill up, a, as a full tank of gas uh, for the, uh, the ICE vehicles that you have on the road compared to the electronic vehicles, um, you know, coming out of Tesla. Uh, that is a very, in my mind, a very important um, Benchmark. You know, if I was going to buy my own uh, vehicle, one thing that I looked at for EVs, especially early on uh, in the EV market, was the range that I would have to just charge it up way too often. Um, it would not get me from point A to point B for some of the longer trips that I do. Uh, however, with uh, with the new battery technology coming out, um, and it's also a, a tiered battery system based on nickel composition. I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, you know that uh, the mileage that they're getting out is being competitive and, and even really uh, going up above and beyond in some ways uh, what you see in ICE vehicles. Um, for the nickel composition, the more, uh, from what I understand, the more nickel that you have, uh, the more energy that you get out of it and uh, the, the longer range that you get out of it. So um, for the uh, the lowest uh, nickel composition, I think they're saying uh, for the, at least for the Cybertruck, 345 miles, uh, you know, on a single charge, 
Um, and then that goes all the way up to uh, 770 miles uh, for the one that has the most uh, nickel. They, and they have, they have a, a low range, a mid range, and a high range based on the nickel composition. Um, and again, you can fact check me on that one. Uh, that's not my area of expertise. Um, but that, uh, that all came out during battery day uh, back in September. So uh, not incredibly new information, but it is important information to keep in mind uh, for the, uh, the growing EV market. I mean, they're up, I think their next goal is uh, 140,000 vehicles uh, in uh, Q4 um, in order to reach that 500,000 uh, EV, uh, EVs uh, in 2020. And, uh, and Elon Musk came out saying that uh, you know their goal is to hit 20 million electronic vehicles sold um, per year, uh, you know, within the next decade. So um, moving towards that target, that, you know, we I mean they need to scale the production uh, by 40 times in order to reach that. They have measures in place to uh, move along that supply chain so that way lithium is not uh, is not one of the uh, bottlenecks that they have, and also uh, recycling batteries is something else that they're looking into. Uh, to uh, make use out of the the lithium that's currently available versus the um, versus the lithium that still would need to be mined. So um, also the the lower cost uh, of production uh, that they have for the batteries that's also something huge. And then also the, there's also almost a seventy percent cut in gigawatt hours uh, and investment capital required to uh, build their factories. So uh, they have a lot of things going for them. Uh, they're just a, a huge company. They're a growing company. Fundamentally, um, you know, it's very sound, you know, over a long period of time for, for Tesla to really, um, you know, just to, uh, continue to go through the roof. Um, some people are even coming out and saying, you know, up to being a trillion dollar company. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how that uh, market cap plays out for them over time. Um, I, I am interested in some of the more near term stuff, you know, and I think some of you guys are too. Um, should you uh, buy Tesla now? Uh, is it too run up right now? Uh, you know, what, uh, what else is coming in the, the nearer future, at least as far as taking a position, or if you have a position, should you hold on to that position? Should you sell your position? Um, you know, there can really be a lot that comes into play. Uh, so a few things to keep in mind. Uh, we do have some market uncertainty due to the delayed stimulus concerns. Well, a delayed stimulus, we're concerned about it. Uh, and then also uh, the resurgence of, uh, of COVID, even though there are vaccines out there in the United States, some of the vaccine funding coming through the, uh, the stimulus is also something else that's um, you know, still weighing on the stock market a little bit, in my opinion. Uh, also, it's the end of December, so you know, we've got to watch out for some profit taking and some uh, people cutting their losses uh, you know, that might negatively affect the price or at least cause it to hold steady instead of continuing to grow. Um, Something that we can look forward to uh, coming in uh, January would be um, uh, Biden officially taking office and uh, putting out any further EV news. We already know that he does support EVs. He'd like to see about 500,000 new charging stations in the United States. Um, you know, that would really uh, help the infrastructure for EVs going forward. So let's take a look at the uh, charts and see what we can see on the technical side of things uh, for at least this week coming ahead and maybe talking a little bit about farther out from there. All right, so here we are looking at the, uh, the daily chart for Tesla um, and taking us all the way back to uh, from July up until uh, now and uh, at least up until uh, Thursday, December 24th. And uh, you can see um, that we're trending upwards that we have uh, we have higher lows continuing throughout. Um, you know, even up to here, we still have those higher lows. And as far as the highs go, we went. Uh, we have this high right here, up to a double top high that we have here. You know, possibly sign signaling that uh, short-term drop that we have leading into some con consolidation. Um, and then as we got closer to that uh, that news, the S and P uh, inclusion. Um, you know, we really started seeing that taper off that consolidation, even indicated by that uh, lower volume that we have uh, down in here. S&P news comes out uh, and we can start to see this, uh, this stock price just take off. You know, that price action is really moving um, all the way up to uh, 695, uh, you know, where we topped out and then it quickly came back down uh, closer to uh, the range that we have here. And you can see that, uh, that curve as this thing tapers off a little bit. Um, and there's that big spike that we have on the Friday leading up to um, the S&P inclusion. Uh, and then we had some people doing some profit taking afterwards. And that leads us up to um, December the 24th, Christmas Eve. Uh, so 
<laughs> that's the chart. Not much surprising there. Uh, if we bring up uh, the uh, the five day moving average, this is one that I thought uh, fit really well given the volatility of the uh, Tesla stock that we have here. Um, if we look back here, you can see it acting as support. And then uh, right here, we have that crossover into uh, resistance. And uh, it, I just feel like it, this is a really good model for the, uh, the way that this stock is behaving so far. And if we trail it into these closer times, you can see it acting as uh, support. And then, uh, you know, really here is where it kind of falls into uh, resistance again. So when you look uh, at this uh, price that we have here at about uh, almost 660, um, I think that that's going to be a price for resistance. And uh, with it being the end of December and also the uncertainty in the market, um, if we see it drop back down to this uh, area of support here about uh, about um, six hundred twenty dollars, you know, maybe all the way back. I can't see it dropping below six hundred. Uh, we can't in fact ignore the fact that that round number of six hundred, which maybe this one's a better one, six oh five. Uh, you know, I think that either of those two those two areas is are areas where we'll find support. Um, and maybe, uh, you know, it'd be a really significant pullback that we would drop all the way back down here. Um, you know, that's almost uh, 15% uh, that it would come back, but I can't see it dropping more than 5 to 10% uh, in the upcoming week. Um, you know, it might lead way to some buying opportunity. Uh, so if we switch out the moving average and uh, we bring in the Bollinger Bands that we have here, um, I like this uh, view because if we go backwards just a little bit, you know, we can see that narrowing of the Bollinger Bands, bringing it close together uh, to that uh, that average price that we have there. You know, very uh, little volatility back here, uh, and as we go forward, we can see uh, that greater volatility, that uh, bullish behavior that we have, and then that cross uh, right there into uh, consolidation. Uh, you know, indicating another big move coming, and then we see that move happen another area of consolidation, another big move happening, you know, all along this. And if we put up, um, I like the EMA 100 for this. Uh, again, it's about fit. And I think that the 100 is a much better fit than the, the standard 200. Uh, so when I bring this up, you can see we're still in bullish territory. We're still above that uh, the EMA 100. And, uh, and that's a, you know, that's a nice strong signal for us. And I would certainly wouldn't go against the trend uh, that we see here. However, um, looking at this volume tapering off as it does, and I know that the 24th was a short day, um, you know, that we wouldn't really have the full activity. It, the narrowing of the Bollinger Bands that we have here, uh, says it, it indicates that there might be, you know, a small sign of consolidation. Uh, I don't see it coming uh, back down to the next uh, area of, um, or the next breakout period that we have. Uh, you know, it could be a month, it could be two months off. I think when the earnings for Q4 get reported, uh, is when you'll see that next area of uh, big volatility of the breakout uh, come out. And uh, I've already gone over the revenue and the uh, EPA or the um, earnings per share uh, estimates. And, um, you know, so far they're looking pro positive, depending on how we get surprised. Um, you know, if, uh, if the earnings come out positive uh, and we beat expectations, I mean, this thing's going to rip up, a, you know, more for us, uh, you know, maybe another five to 10%. Uh, if the earnings come out negative, you know, it really depends on how negative. Uh, but we do have those, um, those key uh, parts of their expansion coming in. We have that new factoring opening in Germany, followed by next year, the, the one opening in, uh, near Austin, Texas. Um, those are going to be uh, big moments uh, for Tesla. And then also the production that follows, uh, we might see, you know, per quarter or per year, uh, lag where we're slightly behind that. Uh, Elon Musk did say during battery day that it would take them um, anywhere from uh, 18 to 36 months to really see uh, the implications of the reductions to cost uh, and the increase in range. Uh, and then I also think that the production of their vehicles, you know, for that to really come into play in their stock price. So um, I still think there's positive things ahead. I think that, you know, going up to a uh, stock price of a thousand, I think, you know, within the next, uh, you know, 12 to 24 months, we could be getting close to that uh, by 36 months. I think, you know, when we realize if the implications are as good as uh, what Tesla thinks they are, as Elon Musk thinks they are, um, you know, we could certainly get up to that, uh, that price of a thousand dollars within the next uh, three years, um, you know, if not sooner, but we, like I said, we'll have to see how that plays out. So 
let me get rid of the Bollinger Bands here uh, and let's bring up uh, the RSI and I like to combine that uh, with the MACD and I realize that it's not uh, always good to have a really cluttered screen uh, but I do like <clears throat> I do like to give people um, you know multiple points of view so uh, if we try to go from any one indicator we're just not going to get a complete story. So um, I like to look across and make a, a well-rounded informed decision. Uh, so the fundamentals are important to me, especially because I like to do more swing trades and long-term trading. Um, if it were uh, day trading, I would certainly use uh, something a little bit different, maybe uh, one of the fast stochastics uh, to really give that and maybe a slow stochastic on top of it just to smooth it out a little bit. Um, so, uh, bringing up the RSI and uh, the MACD that we have here. Um, so what we see is that we're still in an uptrend. We can see this, uh, This uh, you can call it overbought, but with the uptrend that we have here, it's it's less meaningful uh, because they're agreeing with one another that we have an uptrend and you know we have the increase uh, in buying. And uh, with it coming back down here into uh, still bull territory, uh, you know, but dropping a little bit, um, you know, I think it, you might be able to consider that uh, just a, a little bit of divergence because you have an increase in, the, in uh, the stock price here, according to the candles, that when you look at the lows that you have uh, higher lows, and then here you have, uh, according to these lows, they're not down here where you'd love to see them for setting up an excellent buying opportunity for great divergence, but you do have a little bit of divergence uh, between the RSI uh, and what we see up here in the candlesticks. The interesting thing when you bring up the uh, MACD is that right back here, all the way back on December the 16th, um, is where you start to see um, that consolidation. And that consolidation is really in my mind, kind of um, negating some of the effects of these indicators that we have. Uh, so really, the bulls, the bears, they haven't really uh, decided who won that war yet. Uh, we're not going to see a lot of uh, price action according to what we see in the MACD anyway. Uh, in the coming week, we can see a little bit more strength from the bears coming in. Uh, and I don't think that's a sign of weakness in the stock. Like I said, it's the end of December. Uh, we still have room for profit taking. Um, you know, or people are going to want to lock that in. We'll have people cutting their losses, uh, especially if they bought in at this 695. Uh, you know, depending on how significantly they bought in there, um, they might want to uh, shed some of that uh, that weight in order to uh, take tax advantage of their losses. Going back to it, then what we have so is this uh, support area here at about 615, and I, I definitely wouldn't be surprised in the coming week to see us hit that bottom and some people might treat that as a buying opportunity um, and then down here you know be down at about 600 uh, off this one or maybe even and I guess that one's still about 600 or so 585 if it drops below 600 I don't think it'll be by much um, I think that uh, people have really have it in their minds that that number is 600 and I think that if the bull if the uh, bears tried to um, take advantage and drop us below that number. I think you'll see Ali come back and push it back up above 600 um, quickly, especially leading into January. All right, so I did mention uh, stochastics, so I figured that I would show this a little bit. So there's the daily chart, but I'm gonna drop down to um, the hourly chart here uh, for the stochastics, just to give us a, a, a better view of what we have. So I'm using a 1066 stochastic and uh, when you look at that, we have our K line down here in blue, uh, and our percent K and our percent D in orange. So um, you can see the trend line coming up this way. Uh, and so what I would be looking for is uh, divergence that's going to allow me to see where we're oversold uh, and then try and leave that into um, you know, a buying opportunity uh, because I don't want to trade against the trend. So uh, the trend, and again, I'm using the EMA 100, because I like the way that it fits. Uh, and I think it's a, a better indicator given all the volatility that we've had. Um, so for instance, when you look here, that drop off that we have, you know, the, the bears took over for a little while and then we hit this point at about 616. And then if you look down here in the stochastics right here, we have that point that says, hey, go ahead and buy back in. Honestly, <clears throat> this dip right here, uh, according to the stochastics, if I was uh, playing this uh, hourly, I would have been uh, looking for where the K and the D lines uh, or the K line turns 
uh, back up towards that. We're looking for that uh, inflection from a decrease to an increase. Um, so right there where you have that turnaround uh, would be where I'd be looking for it. Uh, maybe at the very least I'd be waiting for that intersection itself, um, but you can uh, see that that's just a little bit delayed and according to the candlesticks we lose, we have to buy in at a significantly higher price. So playing this hourly and again, <laughs> pre-market uh, Monday could do uh, funny things to this. Uh, I would use this more as an intraday indicator than I would uh, you know, on the dailies or a long-term uh, indicator. Uh, for this, I would be using this for a specific entry point uh, leading into this. I expect to see this, uh, this EMA uh, continue to rise in the next week. Um, and I also expect to see, according to the stochastics for intraday um, opportunities, um, you know, maybe looking for another point, this uh, dropping down a little bit, maybe because some of that profit taking and people cutting their losses. Um, I would expect to, to see that here. Okay, so jumping back to the daily chart, uh, I've mentioned resistance, you know, uh, 615, 620, you know, maybe down to 600. And if we see it drop below 600, that we're going to see um, a bull rally, at least that's my uh, opinion on this. Um, <clears throat> but I didn't really talk about uh, you know, where we'll find resistance. So I just wanted to mention that quickly. So uh, resistance, this uh, 666 uh, is certainly going to be an area where uh, we can look for resistance, uh, you know, maybe falling a little bit short of that, especially uh, you know, given the details that, uh, that I've said about, uh, about the stimulus being delayed, about, about COVID, about profit taking. Um, so the, the uncertainty that we have uh, plus tax season implications uh, coming into this, you know, I think that's going to be a good area for resistance. Um, this area up here uh, that we have for resistance, I think, is also going to be, uh, you know, something that uh, that you know we could possibly see again. You know, if we if we do have a, a surprising uh, bull run this next week on Tesla, uh, you know, that that continues to go along with this trend that we don't see it uh, flattening out at all. Uh, you know, I don't think it's going to go flat, but I think it'll it'll be less steep. Um, in this next week. Um, those are the things that we need to keep in mind that we need to consider. So um, do I see it going above uh, that 666 in the coming week? Uh, I think it might. I don't know that it will make it all the way up to the 695 high that we have here. Um, if it does go higher than 666, I think it'll stay lower than 695. So what does that mean for buying opportunities? Well, uh, if I were going to approach this as a long-term investor, um, really there's not any horrible entry point because I believe that this uh, company uh, will take their, their stock price to the moon. So if I'm not interested in maximizing my profits, but thinking of a good enough entry point, which isn't really my style, but if I was gonna play it that way, it's not gonna be a bad time to buy in any point in the near future. Um, you know, you might see it, uh, if you saw it drop down, you were going to hold on to it for years anyway. Like I said, Elon Musk, 36 months for them to realize the implications of the uh, improvements that they've made. Then that longer term window is much more important to you than anything that happens near term, uh, because nothing is really changing about the company in the, in the short term, regardless of what the stock price does. And they're still solid. I think they're wonderful. Uh, I really like what they're doing, uh, the positivity that they're putting out there in the world with uh, trying to make the world a better place. Uh, trying to make it cleaner, greener. Those are all things that I care about. As a swing trade, what do I do if I'm going to uh, enter a position for this? Uh, if I'm going to enter a position, I'm going to watch it uh, play out uh, day by day, look and see if it really is doing that consolidation towards some sort of breakout. If it does continue to uh, consolidate, my guess would be that the next breakout move that we have uh, would likely be into more bullish territory that we'd have another increase. And when would I think that would happen? I think that would happen after Biden is sworn into office uh, in you know mid to late January. Um, if it would break out bearish, it would be some sort of negative news. I think it would be a very temporary um, bearish breakout. I think it would give us a huge buying opportunity. Um, so that would be something that I would really look for is that, uh, that divergence between um, the bullish trend that we're in right now, and then uh, some bearish price action uh, taking place because I believe it is very temporary. And once people get over the, the shock and when they're done selling the news, you know, um, the old Warren Buffett, you know, buy when other people are fearful. Um, you know, I would certainly buy in during that fearful time. 
uh, into, in order to maximize the amount of profit that I would get. And then uh, I would watch for that uh, you know, significant upswing to happen. I really like, uh, like if we look back here uh, at this double top that we have, as soon as I see that double top forming, I would try and get out of this, maybe get out uh, down here on this next candlestick. Um, you know, in order to treat this as a swing trade rather than a, a long-term position, I'd be looking for the same thing going forward here. Watch for some sort of dip back down towards this average, um, you know, or uh, looking for some of the crossover points uh, in the MACD, uh, or if we are looking for divergence with RSI or the stochastics, those would be all things that I'll be looking for, um, you know, that breakout from consolidation to um, up to the top line or breaking the top line in the Bollinger Bands. Um, those would be things uh, that I would be interested in doing as a swing trade for this. As far as day trading Tesla, I don't really have a lot to say there about the week that's coming up ahead. I would really have to watch each day play out. Um, I think that we're not going to see a lot of price action coming off of this uh, in the next day. You know, maybe at most a 10% drop is my guess, you know, over the entire week that's coming up. You know, 5 to 10% would be uh, decent. In my mind, it would be normal for this time of year. Um, for this stock, for the position that it's at. Well, that's all I got for you for today. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope that you found uh, some information here to be helpful. Uh, anything that I say here is for entertainment purposes only. Uh, you know, you still want to uh, see a financial professional, somebody who's going to help advise you for uh, how to enter your trades or exit your trades. But I gave you the opinions, uh, the things that I would do that would make me money. And, uh, you know, if it helps inform your perspective, you know, go out and do your due diligence, you know, really get a full uh, idea of the trade that it is that you're going to make before you take it. Uh, you know, these Sunday updates are going to be, uh, you know, a big thing for me moving forward. So I hope that you join me, hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, make sure that you uh, click that notification bell so that you can see the videos the moment that they come up. Uh, you know, if there's uh, something that you, you would like me to check out, put it in the comments. You know, I always appreciate compliments. We're all about positivity here. Um, you know, share this out with your friends. I wish you health. I wish you wealth. And I wish you all the money in the world. Have a great day.